My name is Mawani Keala Akaka. 43 years ago, a handful of us started the Native Hawaiian Movement for Justice, the modern Hawaiian Movement for Justice in Kalama Valley. That was the beginning of locals and Hawaiians looking around the situation in Hawaii and questioning the direction Hawaii was going in and wondering whether or not it was really happening in the best interest of our people. One of the kupuna from Mililii had said, if not for Kalama Valley, there would be no Aluliki and no Oha. Well, you know, that was 43 years ago. And um, relating to, to sovereignty, there's a great deal of concern that those who are part of the sovereign nation should be here at home. You know, uh, the Democratic Convention uh, this past summer, um, as, as Layla had said, passed a resolution that uh, those who are part of the Hawaiian nation should be here at home. You know, many of our family members live on the mainland. I have brothers and sisters living in California, Augusta, Georgia, uh, nieces and nephews living in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, the Hawaiians that live in the mainland, you know, are struggling day to day to survive on the mainland. They have no idea what's going on here, much less the needs and problems of our people. So I feel that it's very, very crucial that the Hawaiian nation, we want everybody to come back home. Look, everybody's moving to paradise, but our own Kanaka Maoli end up, many of them end up living on the mainland. And if we were to give them the vote, they would be, they who know little about what's going on here, could be <laughs> ruling and directing how we live here. So it's, it's really imperative. We need our Kanaka Maoli to come back home and help us to fight for justice, to reestablish our Hawaiian sovereign nation. So the feeling is by many, it is imperative that Native Hawaiians move back home and help us fight for justice and become a part of the Hawaiian sovereign nation. That should be, that should be a must and that should be a rule uh, I know this uh, uh, role commission is, is, you know, is, is moving on, but I hope they, they realize and take seriously the fact that we got to have the Kanaka Maoli here at home making decisions that will affect our future. I was also a founder of, of Kalahue and a, legislate, a legislature, uh, a legislator of, of Kalahue. And when we put together Kalahue, Mililani Trass had wanted me to be a uh, lieutenant governor, but um, Frenchie DeSoto, who was a trustee at that time as well, you know, said, no, you've got to make a choice, either Kalahue or the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Um, as I was a trustee for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for 12 years. And uh, no way was I going to give up uh, being trustee for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Um, uh, the legislators for the Hawaiian Constitutional Convention should be elected from the district that they represent and not at large as OHA trustees are elected. We need true representative government of people that know and understand the problems of their community. And they, all, and they also need to be held accountable. The Hawaiian nation needs to be more in touch and answerable to the Hawaiian community than in some ways OHA has been. And that's a, a feeling from, from throughout the community. You know, as it stands, I'm, I think I'm the only one from the Big Island that's even here. Um, the Hawaiian government must be true advocates for our people's needs and problems and not distant and removed on a day-to-day -day basis, on the day-to-day -day struggles of our people. As many of our Kanaka Maoli seem to be, as it seems to be the case with uh, and concern of many of our, our Kanaka Maoli, uh, the representatives of our Hawaiian nation need to be concerned about what is happening to, the, to these islands and the legacy that we are passing on to our future generations in the name of Aloha Aina. You know, the fact that this PLDC uh, has been formed by the governor 
to exploit our ceded lands that uh, uh, the governor is, is using as his own private piggy bank, uh, you know, should be of concern of all of us. Those ceded lands were was a, a, a dowry left to us by our ancestors. And the ceded lands that are part of the Hawaiian nation must be more than Kaho'olawe and a few parcels at Kaka'ako. We deserve more than these crumbs of Aina. I negotiated for over five years for the state settlement that OHA receives with the Waihe'e and later the Cayetano administration. In 1990, it was $138 million plus $15 million a year. Land was supposed to be a part of that settlement, not just dollars. Aina is so important, and we need. There are over a million acres of ceded lands. Hundreds of thousands of these acres should be a part of the Hawaiian nation. It is our birthright. We need lands for Kanaka Maoli to live on and farm, as well as for income producing. I was part of the coalition that was, uh, that was in existence for several years. Uh, you know, many people came together and shared mana'o. You know, OHA, we should not reinvent the wheel. OHA should go over these, some of these proceedings and, and you know, take some of the positive that came of it and uh, uh, utilize it uh, as we, as we go forward to form our Hawaiian nation. You know, there was a concern when they had the coalition, they set up the coalition, that they did not want this nation that was being formed to be used for the Akaka Bill. So there was a great deal of concern at that time that, uh, that uh, this coalition would not be a an appendage or a rubber stamp to go along with the Akaka Bill. There was a great deal of a matrix that was formed statewide all over these islands. There was concern at the time that uh, the coalition that was being formed was not to rubber stamp the Akaka Bill. It, it, looks, it appears as though the Akaka Bill is Maki Dai dead, um, yet millions of dollars were spent to, to, um, uh, to uh, support this, what was, I'm Kalamai, what was the name of the, of the, the uh, initiative that was taken at that time? Uh, Kawinoa, yes. Um, millions of dollars was, was spent on Kawinoa to um, what, you know, uh, you know, what positive came out of it. Um, you know, we must go forward. I'm really glad that the Office of Hawaiian Affairs uh, is very concerned and as hopefully is reestablishing uh, a vehicle so that our people can get together and uh, move, move forward to uh, Ho'ohulu Lahui to raise the Hawaiian nation. You know, we uh, also should be concerned because of the military, the gigantic military control that we have in these islands. Pohakaloa on the big island is, is uh, being programmed for more and more expansion. It is the size of four Kaho'olaves. I'm a founder of the Protect Kaho'olawe Ohana. We live, we on the Big Island, have to live with this, this uh, uh, military uh, expansion that, it, that is happening. You know, at Makua, the judge said there are, they found Evie there, the, uh, the judge stopped the live fire training. Two years later, the judge says, well, they still have not, um, you know, they, have, they still have not uh, done uh, what they're supposed to do relating to the EV, so they cannot have live fire training. Well, they are finding EV on Pohakaloa. And we have been asking the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to get us an attorney so that we can do something about this. According to the order of Kamehameha, there are tunnels under Pohakaloa with artifacts left by our ancestors. 
that are being bombed to smithereens. We need the kokua of not only our sovereign nation to be, but the Office of Hawaiian Affairs relating to the military expansion. You know, General Eisenhower, he ought to know, he was a general who became president, warned us about the military industrial complex. This country spends more than 17 of the top industrial countries in the world on the military. Money that should be spent for health care. Money should, that should be spent for educating our populace while the educational system in this country, much less in our islands, is going down the tubes. You know, it is, we cannot, we must stand up and be counted for, for what is right. And, you know, we beseech the people in this room to help Kokua, we on the Big Island. You know, the military, they do not want the military in Okinawa. They do not want the military in Guam. So we end up being the dumping ground, not only this island, but especially Pohakaloa on the Big Island. Here I have a lease of our ceded lands, which is what Pohakaloa is, for $1 in the 60s. Not $1 a year, $1. While there is depleted uranium there, and every time they bomb, that depleted uranium gets into the air and, and circulates. There is a high incidence of uranium that's being found in people's shishi in, uh, in Hilo. You know, uh, and there are doctors that, you know, that, have, uh, have, that are making these claims. You know, so we really need to move on and to ho'olu lahui, to set up our Hawaiian nation, and to be able to help our people go forward. There are many, 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 many of our people are struggling to get by on a daily level. Many poor people in the Hawaiian community. And it is up to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, as well as our Hawaiian nation to be, to truly uplift the Hawaiian people. Mahalo.